Hi, I'm Michelle Cooper and welcome to the crafty side of my studio. I've been playing around with some things from Artie Mays. Andrea Allen has a Facebook group and she gave away some freebies, some uh, like uh, these frames, these um, slides, slide frames. And uh, so I've been putting them inside here like this with some different kinds of glue. And I think the one that she used on there was probably going to be the best after all. I tried a little bit of this um, art glitter glue and I ended up with trouble. See, can you see this? smeary glue here in the, all around the edges. So it sticks really good, but I didn't do a very good job of gluing that. So this time I think I'm going to try her method of using this um, Fabri Fabri-Tac. Oh, I see. I didn't get the... I have um, something folded over here. Let's see if I can keep this from coming out into the outside. Use my fingers like she did. Pull it around like this and like, like this. Okay, now let's see if I, if I go like this. I think it's going to be all right, except now I have to open up. Oh, I guess it's good. Let's hope no thread got in there now. Yeah, that's actually working pretty good. So, use my wet wipe here to wipe off my finger. And that's actually quite nice. So, I, I what I did is I used her frame and then I used some of these other supplies here. I'll show you. See, these are... <laughs> So I made my own version of what she did just to see. I thought, well, how hard can it be? <laughs> yes. So the page that she gives you for free on her um, on her Facebook is like this. I just took out one of these little labels here. That's a really nice little page full of things so I I cut this one out I took, and I cut out the middle part here and then I cut out my own um, my own butterfly and then if you look back here you can see that I even drew in the uh, antenna <laughs> So I did that with a uh, pit pen. It's a very, very fine tip. It's this small fine tip, the brown tip. So no way was I going to be able to fussy cut those out in a partic particular way. So I just went ahead and just drew it on the uh, acetate. So that's ready to do something with. Again, um, my granddaughter in Hawaii saw a live one of these. It was a... Uh, Hummingbird, hummingbird moth. They don't have hum hummingbirds in Hawaii, but they do have a moth. It takes nectar with proboscis like a hummingbird does. Anyway, I was going to make one of these for her, but of course I didn't do the best job there on the gluing. Also, I thought I was going to do this genius thing here. Uh, I was going to take a cellophane from a donut box and I was going to use that because look at all the look at all the acetate there is on this whole bunch of it but it turns out that it's just too thin and it doesn't work very good so as soon as you start trying to cut it then it flies away and again you know what what this um one that I used here is so much more sturdy than this one. So, live and learn. 
And the one that I used for that was a, um, you know, a page protector, office, an office uh, page protector. That's what I used for this one, and that worked out so much better. I did the same thing on this one, except this one I made my own frame. So here's the... <laughs> So this is Andrea's frame that she made, and then I, that was a, such a great example. I thought, well, let me try this and see if I could do it. So I practiced a little bit of stamping on some regular paper and then on some cardstock, and I liked the, liked the cardstock better. And then I just used uh, um, Distressed Ink. This is the um, uh, Vintage Photo Distress Ink use that. I had a pretty set of butterflies here and I just measured out how much it would be to fold it over and then I made a template like this that I knew would fit over here like that and then I cut that out of cardstock this is all I have left of the cardstock that I did and then I used the vintage photo again um, to distress and antique the paper more and pretty much just folded it over the way that Andrea did. Go to her YouTube and watch how she does that. It looks so easy. <laughs> that, look at all the stuff you have to go through if you try to do your own. Although, it was fun to do my own because she didn't have anything that would quite fit what I was trying to do with this one. This one just has the paper inside. And I, I like it that way, but I also like it this way where you can see through. And then I think it's just going to depend on um, what kind of paper you put it on. So, you know, if I can find some coffee dyed paper here, where did I put that? Oh, here it is. Yeah, if the, um, this, if I had it on a paper that was this color, it looks fine. Then I have some coffee dyed paper here. So this one kind of disappears, although it's okay. This one's still okay too. And then this one, as long as it's lighter coffee dyed paper, you can see that pretty good. So I guess it would just, just depend on, on how much you're going to put it on. So then I was trying to think, I was watching her YouTube again about how she decorated these and she had all kinds of wonderful things. She made a, a an eyelet punch in and then she put a dangle that she had made. This is a um, this is a bead that I made from uh, rolling up paper, magazine paper. And then I just made a dangle out of that. And then I hung a gold bulb pin and a heart on there and I think that can go into a pocket somewhere. Not quite sure what to do with this one. Not quite sure. However, I do have an idea for this one. So I have a pocket I think I want to put it in. I think these would these would both go in the pocket like this if you wanted them in the pocket. This one I think shows better because of the white paper. So I do like that. Yeah, and then um, I thought I wanted to have a little bit of something along here. This I was either going to put a label or something, but then I realized I like this saying, and then I thought, okay, well, how about if I sew some muslin here and I put that on, then I put this on here. But you can see that saying pretty well that way. And then I had some a little scrap of lace. I thought I could sew that on onto here. 
with um, a little button. And I thought that would come out pretty nice. So all I have to do is just uh, connect these on here with some fabric or three in one. This is three in one here. So they're both very similar. If I put some three in one glue here, see if it's coming out. So I'm right down at the end of this thing here. So it's not a lot of stuff coming out of there. And it won't show very much either because I'm going to be putting things on top of it. So it's okay if I go ahead and just stick that on there. Put this on here like that. Then there like this. And put some glue on here. Ooh, that's blobby again. Okay. Maybe I could thin that out a little bit. There. Put this on this end over here like this. There. And then let's see. I bet I should probably sew this button on here and then put this on. Oop, that's what I need to do. Put my lid back on the glue. And then sew this button on here and then glue this whole thing on. And then I think these would look really good together. It almost reminds me of a chrysalis. This, this bead here. Okay, so I'll sew that together as things get dry here. Okay, so I think I'm going to so this thing together here and then glue the whole thing on top of there. So let's find out where the shank is on this little button. That's I kind of like that because this button then has a sort of a three-dimensional quality to it. And go down, come back up. Get it in the right position here. I think that's good. Yep, down. Come back up. Up through the shank if I can if I can get it. There we go. And just pull it in tight. Okay. One more. Yep. Down. And up. And then, oops, where are we here? There we go. Yep, put that in there like that, and then through the shank one more time. Through the shank here, and one more coming up through the fabric. There we go. Then we just tie it off. Oh, I just tie it like a knot. Got enough times going through, I don't think it's going to be a problem. Go back toward the back and cut it off. Okay, got that. Now, see, now it's a little bit more sturdy here. That way, button's not going to come off. I'll use some of this glue again, shake it a little bit. Get a nice big blob here. It's going to be gluing from cloth to cloth. Also, it's going to kind of stabilize that thread in there, too. Over just a little bit. Yeah, like that. 
Yeah, I like that. Ta-da. Oh. So we've got a pocket here. I can put anything in there. This goes in there nicely because I like to put the colors. The whole idea of it. And then it can go on a page and be a pocket here. It would be a pocket in there. There's a lot of things you could do with this. Very useful. All right. Well, we'll see what happens with that one. And I had another um, pocket that I was going to play around with. Put this one back up here. This pocket. Let's just fold it over. So on some music paper, and I thought, doesn't this one look good in here like this? I thought, what if it goes all the way to the bottom if I want, but what if I have it peeking out like that? And then maybe put some bells on here. This is gonna be a boho journal here, so be nice to have some little silver bells. I'll figure out what else to do with it later on. There we go. Okay, so I got the butterfly slides. I've got pockets for them already. And I really appreciate, thank you so much, Andrea, for your idea and for your free ones that you gave on your Facebook group and also for the digitals that you have available on your um, Etsy as well. So, thanks guys. See you next time. Thanks for watching.